Good evening, everyone. It is Thursday, December the 5th, 2019. It is currently 7.03 p.m. Central Time. Well, if you've been paying attention lately to what's happening within Christianity, you know there has been a very hot topic recently. And that hot topic is women preachers. Should women be able to preach from the pulpit of a church? Should they be able to become pastors? Should they preach to men? Should a woman be able to teach a Sunday school class in a church that's made up of men and women? Should a woman be at a Bible conference or some kind of conference preaching to a church full or an arena full of men and women? Should women be able to preach? Now, this controversy blew up. I mean, it's been going on for a long time, but Beth Moore started finding herself in the news. If you don't know who Beth Moore is, famous Bible teacher. And um, she started finding herself, all kinds of news articles were being written about her for a lot of different reasons, but there was some controversy. And John MacArthur was at part of a conference and was asked in a Q&A, you know, what would you say to Beth Moore? And I'm paraphrasing, what would you say to Beth Moore? And he said, and I'm paraphrasing, go home. I think those were the exact words, go home, and everyone went crazy. It blew up and controversy erupted, controversy erupted. How dare he tell that woman to go home? That's, you know, that's wrong, that's horrible. You know, he's undermining the, the importance of women. It's not very Christian-like and chaos. And then uh, John MacArthur, to respond to all the chaos, preached a sermon about women not being able to preach or teach the word, teach the word of God to men. And well, so the controversy continues to rage. Now, on one side, we do have scripture. 1 Timothy chapter 2. 1 Timothy chapter 2, starting in verse 11, we read these words. Let the woman learn in silence with all subjection. But I suffer not a woman to teach nor to usurp authority over the man, but to be in silence. Now, there have been arguments made against that. The arguments go something like, well, that was just a rule for that time. It's no longer in effect, or we're misunderstanding what is actually being said here. Um, that's, you know, you're, you're misreading it. This was something for the apostolic times, whatever. There's, there's all kinds of different arguments made, and it's usually something like that doesn't apply anymore. That was for that point in time. You're misunderstanding it, and they don't really necessarily offer a good alternative, but but you get the idea. There, there's there's been a lots of arguments made um, made about it, and a lot of arguments, um, you know, uh, to to get around it. I guess that's the I guess that's the the way to say it. There's been a lot of arguments to get around it. Uh, so, what do I want to do tonight? Well. <laughs> Okay, I don't even know how to say this. I'm try I was trying to set this up in a serious way, but now I'm going to have a hard time. All right. This is what I'm going to do. I'm going to play an argument made by a woman pastor, a woman preacher, um explaining why women are allowed to preach. Why women are allowed to preach. And I want you to listen to her argument. The aud audio is not great, but I want you to hear what she had to say. Now, remember, we just had scripture, right? And, and again, there are there can be textual arguments made. Well, wait a minute. Um, that was for that time. You know, you're misinterpreting it. Of course, sometimes they never tell you what's the right way to interpret it. Um, but, okay, we've got scripture. So, let's, what would be an argument against the scripture? Well, <laughs> here is the argument. Listen carefully. Blah, 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 blah. And the word became flesh. It's talking about Jesus. Jesus is the word that became flesh. To preach means to deliver the word of God. And Jesus is the word of God made flesh. The Bible says that Mary delivered Jesus. And preaching is to deliver the word of God. 
if preaching is to deliver the word of God and Jesus is the word of God and Mary delivered Jesus, then Mary delivered the word of God. Mary preached a sermon on Christmas morning. So all I came to say is it was strategic that Jesus chose a woman to carry Jesus because he wanted us to understand that it is okay for a woman to deliver the word of God. <laughs> there you have it. There you have it. I... I have to be honest with you, I, I, I don't even know how to respond to that. Let's just, just take a few of the comments there. It was strategic. It was strategic that Jesus chose a woman okay, to deliver Jesus. I think that's the way she said it. Uh, it was strategic the, that God uh, chose a woman to deliver Jesus. Now, let okay. That, that one's a little confusing to me because I, I don't really think uh, there was a, a lot of other options, right? I don't think uh, God could have chosen uh, a man to do it because it's a woman who delivers. And the prophecy was to come from a woman, okay, born of a woman. Okay, like, I, I, I don't know... <laughs> I don't know how you can say that, like, you know, hey, he, 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 had an, he had an option here. I could choose a man to deliver uh, Jesus or I could choose a woman. I'm going to do it. Uh, I'm going to choose a woman because strategically this will prove that women can deliver. Women can preach the word of God. Yeah, that's, that's not hermeneutics, people. That's not a uh, Bible study. That is, that's just, that's sad. That's sad. Okay, and then she makes this argument, preaching is to deliver God's word. Mary delivered Jesus, who is the, you know, the word made flesh. And because Jesus is the word made flesh, she delivered the word. Therefore, women can deliver the word in preaching. Like, what, what kind of argument is that? Like, does that argument somehow cancel the biblical mandate for a woman not to teach her usurp authority over a man? Uh, when that, the, the, the biblical qualification of a pastor is to be a husband of one wife, right? Which means a man. In fact, if you look at 1 Timothy chapter 3, this is the saying, if a man desires the office of a bishop, he desires the good work. A bishop then must be blameless, the husband of one wife, vigilant, sober, of good behavior, given to hospitality to teach, not given to wine, etc., etc. Now, I understand you could make a scriptural argument. Those qualifications were only for that time. They do not apply today. So therefore, we have no biblical qualifications for pastors. You can throw them all out. Okay, throw them all out. There are no biblical qualifications. Therefore, a woman can preach. You can make an argument like that, that 1 Timothy 2, you got to throw that out uh, because that was for the time. 1 Timothy 3, that qualification of uh, being a man, you throw that out. That was only for that time. I think before you're done, you're just going to throw out all of 1 Timothy, I think is what you're going to ultimately do. And, and you're just going to, I guess, basically remove a book from the canon. Okay, or, or maybe the book belonged in the canon, but it was not for anyone after the apostles. I, I don't know. But um, at least you're trying to make some kind of an argument. What, what she just did is forget 1 Timothy 3, Let's just go to this crazy idea that preaching means to deliver the word. Mary delivered Jesus. Jesus is the word. Therefore, she pro this proves that a woman can preach. And God chose a woman strategically to make this point. That's, that's, that's some crazy stuff. Now, this is what I want us to do here, though. And this... And the point of this, and the reason I decided just to kind of not be a serious, because I was going to try to be very sarcastic and say, this is the best argument I've ever heard. But that really, her argument is not really the point. Okay, now you got to listen to me carefully here. I don't care about her argument. I don't even really care about the argument whether a woman should preach or not preach for this episode. I'm not involved in, that's not the point here. I want you to listen to what I'm going to say carefully because this is the point of this episode. And this is a very important point. If you remember, I think it was yesterday, maybe the day before, I recorded an episode where I played some audio clips dealing with uh, Pete Buttigieg, 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 I think if I get his name right, uh, the, the individual running for president, for, the, uh, for trying to run for the nomination for president uh, for the Democratic Party, Pete Buttigieg, yeah. And uh, we played a new campaign ad by Pete Buttigieg where he quotes from Matthew 25. 
all right? And we talked about how he is using the word of God for a political point. However, in other points, he says we shouldn't take the word of God literal. Here yet, he's quoting Matthew 25 as literal. And what we, what I said there is not, let's not, photo, uh, let's not focus on the Democrats. Let's not fo- focus on Pete Buttigieg. Let's focus on ourselves as Christians. Because as he is simply using the word of God any way he chooses for his purpose, right? He's taking the scripture he wants. He says, okay, I'm going to quote this literal. The scriptures he doesn't like, he rejects or says it's not for today or we don't take it literal. He throws those out. And I said, he's simply using the Bible basically as a means to an end. And what we, and, and let's not focus on him or Democrats or politicians. Let's focus on Christians because Christians all the time play the same little game. We, 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 Throw out scripture when we don't like it and we come up with a different argument. Here we have scripture that seems to clearly teach and the historical interpretation has always been that a woman cannot serve as a pastor. She cannot serve in that role. She cannot do that. And she is not to preach or teach or to assert authority over men. That seems to be the clear teaching. Now, you can say that's inside the church. Outside the church at some Bible conference, that's a different thing. Okay, you can make an argument there and you may even have one because I do believe First Timothy is giving instructions for Timothy and how, how the, the, the church should operate, okay? But within the church, she could not be a pastor and she should not be teaching in a church in that capacity. That's, I mean, that's been the agreed upon view throughout church history. I mean, that's been the way it's worked. Now, as we got closer to more, you know, modern times, that started to change. In certain denominations, women started becoming, you know, could be ordained as a pastor, and women started preaching, and women started teaching men in Sunday school. And and over, and you know, as time has changed, the church started adapting uh, to culture, and they brought, and they adapted to the cultural view, and they brought it into the church. But it's not the scriptural teaching. So what happens? Well, what happens is we don't like that scriptural teaching. So we do whatever we can to get around it. In this particular case, we have a woman going to a story about Mary delivering Jesus and somehow trying to use that as an argument, as an apologetic against anyone who says a woman can't preach as somehow scriptural proof for her point of view. It's not Bible study. It's not Bible interpretation. It's just, it's just look for anything to justify my position. What I want to show us is that we're all guilty of doing this. We all play this little game. We come to the Bible and we treat it like, you know, like we can mold it into anything we want it to say. That's what we have to be careful of. That's the point of this entire episode, this entire live broadcast. I'm not going to go very long here, but I just want to show you we're all guilty of this. I'm not picking on her. Okay, I'm not, uh, in my last episode, I wasn't p- uh, picking on uh, Pete Buttigieg. I'm not, I'm not uh, picking on him. I am, I am trying to say that this is something all Christians have to look, look at. We open our Bibles, we read something, and if we don't like it, we just, in fact, we, in many cases, many Christians won't even spend that much time of doing real study to try to get around it. They just, it doesn't pl- apply it, I just ignore it. Let, let me give you a very good example. A very good example. And this one will hit really close to home to some people and make some people extremely mad, but that's okay. The Bible seems to clearly teach that when a person dies, they're going to heaven or they're going to hell. And what will determine whether they go to heaven or go to hell is if they have truly believed on the Lord Jesus Christ, repented, believed on the Lord Jesus Christ, and have been born again. They've been converted. They have been saved. Apart from salvation, apart from a true conversion, truly being born again, truly being saved, they will not go to heaven. That's the biblical teaching. And it doesn't matter if it's your favorite grandparent, doesn't matter if it's a child, doesn't matter if it's a loved one. If they die without salvation, they go to hell. And what do Christians do? A loved one goes to hell. There's no reason to believe that they're they're a Christian. Maybe you haven't been to church in 14 years. There's nothing that really demonstrates a love for God or a, a, a desire for the things of God. It's just they're missing all of the hallmarks of being spiritually alive. 
as a newborn babe, desire the sincere milk of the word, you know, pursuing God, loving God, serving God. Their, their, their life would have some marks of something that resembles Christianity. It's just missing. But when they die, hey, it doesn't matter what the Bible says. They're in heaven. I know they're in heaven. You can't tell me any different. When someone dies, we will get them into heaven no by any means necessary even if it goes even if we don't have any clear scriptural justification for believing they are in heaven. We will say, "Well, I know they're in heaven. I know in my heart they're in heaven." Well, my Bible says the heart is deceitful above all things and desperately wicked. So why are you listening to your heart? Now that's the way you determine doctrinal truth. That's just one example. We could give hundreds of them. Now, listen, we all fall short of what the scripture says. That's not what we're talking about. We all fall short, but we acknowledge that we fell short because the scripture condemns what we did. What we don't do is we fall short and then come to the Bible and say, well... I know the Bible seems to condemn, you know, let's say if you look at a woman with lust, you commit adultery in your heart, which would obviously be a major problem with pornography. Well, I know the Bible seems to condemn pornography, but I think it was just for that time. I don't think it's for now. Well, the Bible seems to actually condemn adultery itself, a physical relation. Well, you know, I think that was only for that time. Well, it seems to condemn homosexuality. Well, I think that was only for that time. Well, I think it seems to prohibit women from being pastors. Well, I think it's only for that time. You name the issue. When it's something, here's the thing. This this is the way Christianity works. Christianity is where we place our trust and faith in God, understanding he is God, he is sovereign, he is creator, he is the one who saves us, it is his word, it is, Christianity is an acknowledgement that there is a God and we're not it. Therefore, we surrender our way, our will, our want to God. Christianity is the surrendering of of some of a god outside of yourself. Christianity is the repenting and turning from the god of self to the god who created self. In other words, you're turning from the god of yourself because that's the god we all worship. We want our way. We we serve self and we realize that we have to turn to the creator of our, ourselves, right? To the self, us. We're not the creator. And what we do is, and this is what a lot of Christians do, we want God. We want that idea that there's a God who loves us, who cares for us, who's looking out for us. We want God. Well, we just want him to be in submission to us. So we come to his word and we want to make it our word. We want it to, to agree with what we want, to our behavior. We're all guilty of it. I'm guilty of it. You're guilty of it. So when I heard this clip from this woman trying to justify women being pastors, I laughed and I shook my head. I'm like, that's insane and that's crazy. And it's hard not to, you know, try to mock it a little bit. But then I said, well, wait a minute. You know, I can mock it or I can look to myself and I look to myself. I may not say something that crazy, but what, how do I twist scriptures to get to what I want? We've had some examples this week. Again, the Pete Buttigieg using Matthew 25. I, what is that? I don't know. Considering the other things he has said about scripture, it makes no sense that he would try to use more scripture. But he's trying to use more scripture to try to get certain a certain voting block to support him. Well, that's, you know, you don't come to scriptures to use it. You come to scriptures to learn it and submit to it. That's That's the difference, okay? So we have him, and now we have this woman trying to justify women being pastors by, hey, God strategically chose Mary to have Jesus. Yeah, he, he strate- strategically chose a woman. No, okay. No, he chose a woman because, well, that's the way it works, okay? All right, that's, that's been the normal way, all right? And um, 
Her delivering Jesus has nothing to do with preaching or the role of a preacher, the office of a preacher or of a pastor. That, that has nothing to do with anything, right? She delivered a baby. That baby, yes, is the word made flesh. Yes, she did deserve the word, deliver the word made flesh. But she wasn't preaching a sermon, okay, in the way that we're talking about preaching a sermon. And, and to try to make that jump is just... It's horrible interpretation, horrible hermeneutics, and it's she has something that she wants to do and believes she should do, and that is preach. The Bible seems to go against it. So what is she going to do? She's going to get what she wants by doing whatever necessary to change the Word of God. I'm guilty of it. We're all guilty of it. That's what I want you to examine in your own spiritual life. In what ways are you guilty of twisting the Scripture to get what you want? All right, I'll stop right there. I just wanted to share that with everyone. And I wanted to, I wanted, I, I saw some people uh, on, uh, in some different sites showing that clip and then mocking it. And, and I, and at first I started laughing and then, but then I thought, well, I'm going to approach this differently. I'm going to turn that onto all of us because I think that's, I think that's the right thing to do. It's hard not to mock it because it's just so crazy and, and, you know, you're like, come on, what, what, what are you doing? Oh, but, you know, we may not be to that extreme, but we're all guilty of doing something similar. Okay, I'll stop right there. I apologize there for a second if I seem distracted. Um, I was getting a, a text. I, I have two iPads, and so I was getting a text in the other iPad. And I couldn't check it on this one because this is where my uh, software is to, do, to go live. So I was trying to get to the other iPad to uh, at least acknowledge the text so it would stop going ding, ding, ding. My voice is almost gone. Um, and just and dis completely disrupting the live broadcast. But it, I, I definitely could hear in my voice that I sounded distracted. So I want you to know exactly what was going on. I hear that sometimes on talk radio. I'll listen. It doesn't matter who I'm listening to on talk radio. And you can just tell as someone who speaks all the time, you know, doing live broadcast, recording, and preaching a sermon. You can just tell when someone is speaking, but you can tell something is happening. And if you're listening to, uh, to it on audio, it always drives you crazy because you're trying to figure out what was going on. But you can just tell that either someone, a producer was talking in their ear or something was happening in the studio and they're just talking, trying to just keep, you know, keep talking while they're attention is diverted to something else and you can just hear it in their voice. Maybe I detect it because I, I speak. You may not even detected it, but I don't want you going, I wonder what was going on there. Now you know what was going on. All right, that's the end. Wanted to share it. Let me know your thoughts. You can email me at newsif at yahoo.com. Newsif at yahoo.com. Hope, I hope you appreciate me using this to turn it to all of us and not just simply to mock that particular person. I'm not giving you her name or anything like that because I don't think uh, the woman preaching there is a famous pastor of any of any note. So there's no point in just mocking the mock. I just want to, I mean, what she says there is crazy, but um, it really says a lot about all of us. It's just, an, it's, it's just a symptom of a greater problem, just like the people. Pete Buttigieg uh, situation as well. So it's just a symptom of a bigger problem. We treat the scriptures as if they're there to be manipulated and twisted for whatever we want. And we've all got to rid that of our Christian lives. All right, God bless. Everyone have a great night.